Do you want to start off by introducing yourself? Kevin Cable, 32 years old, I live in Connersville, Indiana. Uh, coon hunted most of my life. How'd you get into it? Uh, my grandpa Carl Hall and James Tyree got me into hunting. Did you pleasure hunt mostly at first? Or? Yeah, pleasure hunted mostly. I think I hunted my first competition hunt when I was eight. Uh, it was right there at Liberty Indiana Coon Club, so I think I got fourth in it first time I've ever been in. Looking back when you first started getting into competition hunting, do you have any advice for new people or younger people just getting started? Probably the biggest thing is to know your dog. Uh, my wife Angie, me and her put on a couple youth hunts uh, at one at Hannes Creek and that's probably the biggest thing I see judging is a lot of these kids come out here and they don't put much preparation into it. The, if you know your dog it eliminates a lot of problems. Uh, even not knowing the rules, if you know your dog, it, it helps it helps kind of get away from any headache. Uh, pretty much if you know your dog, the rest of it kind of falls in place. The more you go, the more you learn the rules. Yeah. And for people that might not know what that means as far as knowing your dog, uh, you just want to explain that a little bit? Know your dog, what it sounds when it's running the track or if it's treed or just hunt with it night in and night out. Not just, you know, grabbing it and going to a hunt, not preparing. Uh, just like a sport, you practice. Uh, hunting's no different. If you don't practice, you ain't going to be good at it. And the same way with the dog. The dog gets to know the, the handler just as good as you get to know the dog, and everything works together kind of like a team. Uh, that's a good segue into another topic. Uh, as far as preparation, do you feel like how, how I guess how would a new person prepare for a hunt, like for themselves? Just take up people first. Uh, if you could, if you got a group of people you can hunt with, you can kind of, you know, just do like mock hunts. You know, when you go out, and strike your dog, and tree your dog, and, and don't lie to yourself. Uh, if you make a mistake, or if your dog makes a mistake, realize it and kind of try to work through it so you don't do it when there's money on the line or <laughs> when you're in a comp hunt. Uh, that's how my uncle James taught me and my brother and his his oldest boy James. We always hunted on the weekends and. That's kind of what we would do. We we hunt. He and if we made a mistake, he would let us know what we'd done. We we try to fix it so we didn't do it on the on the weekends. What about hunting? Like preparation as far as dogs? Uh, every, every dog's different. Uh, my biggest biggest thing is to know what you need to do with the dog. To let the dog kind of tell you. Um, if the dog looks tired, wore out, give it a night or two off and. Um, Spend, I spend a lot of time with my dogs in the daytime, and you know if they're wore out, you can, can back up a little bit. But uh, the biggest thing is, I would say, knowing your dog in and out, just knowing kind of what it needs. And it's hard for a youth or a person just getting into hunting to know that. But you can see if they're, you know, if they're normally jumping around the kennel and uh, a little sluggish, maybe coming out to eat, you kind of back, you, you've got them kind of hunted down. So to back off a little bit and let them get a little bit more fire in yep. them. So let's say you don't have necessarily like someone else's dog that's been competition around a lot. Like if you're a new person and you've trained a dog or you have a dog that is young, maybe hasn't been in a competition hunt, I guess how would you know it's ready? You really don't. Uh, pretty much all I've ever done is took it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We always call them $25 lessons <laughs> for the handler, for the handler and the dog. You know if you. If a lot of times, if I think I got a dog ready, if it's you know doing good pleasure hunting, uh, take it to a hunt and put it with strange dogs and strange territory. And if it performs, you know you're about ready. If it don't perform, you come home and 
work on the things you've seen that it was lacking in, in the hunt. Uh, a lot of it's just trial and error. And I, I'm a firm believer if you don't over overdo something, a dog, you can always fix it. Leave it laid up a week, two weeks. You can come back and, and start over on it. Hit, kind of hit the reset button. Uh, that leads into kind of another question. Is there a time or something that you, you notice, like with a young dog, that if you start putting in hunts, you see maybe it's time to take it back and just work it more in the woods before you put it in another competition hunt? Yeah, uh, and I think a lot of that, uh, you get to know it more as a handler, the more you do it when you're kind of getting close to that point. Uh, the biggest thing is, you know, first when you've got it really hunted up, you're going, the dog's performing, looking good, not making no mistakes, and then you'll slowly see it make a mistake here, make a mistake there, and then it don't get corrected for it, so then it makes more of a habit of it. So pull it out, go pleasure hunt and correct that problem, and uh, then maybe start back, you know, skip a weekend or two here and there. Is there a certain age that makes really a difference that you noticed over the years? Um, I don't know if it's a difference more of a personal reference uh, I really like hunting mine I like getting mine really ready from a year to a year and a half and then after their one year old super stakes are fixed and turn two and then I'll kind of start pushing them in more hunts because they're kind of more set in their ways um, I've really never pushed a dog real young in multiple hunts just kind of here and there local hunts to see what I need to work on it but until it hits two I really don't really put it in the truck and go to major hunts with it. Um, like I said, that's just something that I've always liked to do so I don't get them burn out or yeah. get them chewed up at a young age. In your experience, is there an age where dogs tend to start to fall behind if they get too old? They all different? I've, I've never really hunted, hunted one much past probably four or five years old. I normally got another younger dog that I'm kind of jumping to. Um, but I don't really think I would say the oldest, Nikki Hale, he probably hunts some of the older dogs I've ever seen somebody hunt. He's had pretty good success hunting some older dogs, seven, eight, nine years old. But uh, I think as long as their physical ability is good, I don't think they lose their touch none as long as they can keep up physically. Yeah. But that's just, I've always kind of liked the younger dog. When you're transitioning a dog from just hunting on its own or pleasure hunting, into the comp hunts, what are some of the biggest issues that you see? Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the breed of dog uh, that you're hunting, but most of the part on my dogs are pretty independent, so I don't have to work on that much. Just more dogs coming in and covering them, making sure they're used to that. And, um, but some dogs you got to work on, making sure they don't go to other dogs in certain situations if they're treed close and you got to recut them. Um, sometimes you have to work on that. Um, sometimes just dogs in general, strange dogs and barking, leaves barking, and stuff that they're not used to kind of yeah. freaks them out. But um, that's another thing, just try, trial and error on each dog's different. It's the biggest thing is just putting them in them situations and seeing what you need to work on. How often do you, like when you're getting a dog ready for that, like if you're hunting it by itself versus other dogs, how many times do you think you do that just to get them used to other dogs uh, or like a percentage if you could say 50 50 alone with others I I probably don't worry about that as much as others but then again I'm hunting the same line of dogs and I don't have problems with dogs but it's good to probably mix them up probably more 75 percent by themselves and you know the rest with some dogs um, I think it hurts them more to hunt them strictly by themselves than it does to hunt them with dogs because you don't ever go to a hunt and hunt by yourself. Right. I mean, so you always got dogs with you. So I don't, I don't worry as much always hunting my dog by itself. Now, if it's young, just getting started, I, I like to single them out and really put some just one on one time into them. But uh, as far as once they get to where they treat 40 or 50 coons, I just hunt them however, whenever. Don't I really don't let it bother me none. Yeah. So once you start taking the dog, maybe from just pleasure hunting or local hunts, is there anything you do to get them ready just for the trip? If you're going to a bigger hunt, that's going to be a long ways on the road. Uh, something that I, I like doing before I ever even put a lot of time into a dog. If I get a dog I somewhat like, I'll make a road trip to a buddy's house or something two, three hours away. If the dog don't eat good on the road, I don't mess with it. As soon as I get home, I'll, I sell it. Because if a dog don't eat good, 
it ain't gonna haul good. It can't perform if it ain't eating. And that's a big thing that I've seen with some dogs over the years that they're they're picky eaters. Don't like to eat away from home. Yeah. And I don't I don't put much time into a dog like that, no matter how good it is, because it's just it's a never ending battle with them yeah. to keep them healthy. And but that's really the only thing that I've seen that that hinders a dog on the road. Now some dogs don't haul the best. Some you might have to go a night before, kind of let them get stretched out and let them get stretched back out. But for the most part, the eating is the only thing I've really seen that affects some dogs. Um, but other than that, I really don't do much, you know, to get ready to leave to go to an event. So you want to explain just what he's doing? Bank. Yeah. Uh, he's in there 300 yards. Just started opening. He's running a little track, kind of a little creek bank. How do you know the difference between just barking on a track or when he's treed? Um, sounds totally different. It's kind of hard to explain. He's He's more of a chop mouth tree dog. He's kind of, I'd call it a ball squall on the ground. So it's common for most dogs that their voice sounds different on the ground versus tree. Yeah, very, very few chop mouth all the way. Locating right there. He's treed now 400 yards. And the locate was those long barks? Yep, them long drawed out barks. And he's just telling you that yep, he found them? Yep, come get him. me. We didn't get him. Put your laser on it? Yep. What do you say, Jackson, when you find a coon? Huh? There's three branches. Yep.
make it like that on top of make a bunch of them. Right? Just want to kind of briefly describe the format of most competition hunts. Obviously, they all have different, just slightly different rules, but the general concepts uh, similar. Probably the biggest concept is probably there's uh, everybody's got to strike their dogs for 175, 50, and 25, and then the same way with the tree, which uh, about all of them went to 125 tree, 75, 50, and 25. Um, on the trees, there's normally a breakdown after either every 30 seconds or after every after two minutes, just depending on what organization it drops down to 25. Um, that's about the biggest part of the you know striking tree. How many dogs are typically hunting at once? Four, four at one time, um, no less than. Well, I guess UKC, you can hunt one dog, but for the other ones, it's normally three dog cast. So you're hunting with three other dogs. <clears throat> Let's say you declare, you say, tell the judge that your dog is treed. How long do you have to wait until you can go, go to your dog? Uh, well, I believe all that's fixing to change uh, beginning of the year, and I believe all of them is gonna be three minutes. Um, Pro Sport, UKC, and PKC. Um, so you gotta wait three minutes for that dog to be to stay there and tree. He's gotta bark uh, at least one time every two minutes to keep the tree alive. Um, if he shuts up for two uh, two minutes, he'll take a minus on the tree. So do you just go to the dogs and order them that they're declared treed? Yeah, to order they're declared treed, uh, you'll go to them. Um, you got uh, you got eight minutes to shine the tree. Um, to find the cone within that eight minutes. Uh, then at the end of that, if you don't find it, everybody votes on it. To, if it's a circled or minus tree, um, majority majority scores the tree. Uh, and I, circle that just means that your circle means there's a place the cone could have hid that that you didn't see it. Um, a slick tree or minus tree would mean that kind of like tree on a telephone post there ain't there ain't nowhere that coon could hide or no nowhere that you wouldn't have found it if it was there and how long are the hunts usually uh they're either an hour 90 minutes or two hours most of them nowadays are 90 minutes and is that continuous for the most part at the time yeah um ukc is more of a kind of an in and out deal sometimes because you're trying to rack up a, a, a better score. Um, Pro Sport and PKC, they're more of a you stay in one spot for the whole time and just recut your dogs because most of the dogs normally ain't together. So you, so you spend most of the time just walking in between trees. I guess, is there an, any reason a dog would be disqualified from a uh hunt? -huh? Uh, UKC, they can get disqualified for training off game. Um, Pro Sport and PKC, about the only way they can, the dog itself can get disqualified is, is for fighting. Um, that's about the only thing that can, or, or molesting a female, trying to breed a female that's uh, not in heat, or if the female is in heat, uh, you can you can scratch the female for being in heat. Um, and scratch, that's just the term they use to mean disqualified. Yeah, disqualified. Um, and that don't necessarily make them disqualified for the next night. It just for that that 90 minute cast, or they can't hunt if it's a week long hunt or whatever. And there's PKC, which is Professional Kennel Club, UKC United Kennel Club, AKC American Kennel Club, um, 
Pro Sport. Uh, I'm trying. Is am I missing any? Um, you got I don't know ACHA. And they've kind of they kind of jump back and forth in between a couple different registries. They different people's been taking it over and they add some initials to it, but I don't know what it is now. But they have a world hunt every year and some smaller hunts, but I don't exactly know what it is right now. And they each have separate rules. The general concept's the same, but they each have their own rules, so it's important that you know the exact rules for each registry. Some people like different registries for the type of dog you hunt. You know, suits suits them for their rules that the rules suit their dog better and suits them better. Um, so you kind of just get in where you fit in on some of that. How I always looked at it. Uh, been a big debate lately on everybody wanting to change the rules they kind of all want them to get the same but me personally i think they need to leave them all all alone because it gives people more variety of where they want to go and what kind of rules they want to hunt under suits them better but a lot of them they're kind of changing them they're a lot alike now especially pro sport ukc and pkc they've all kind of got the same rules a little bit different twist to some of them but for the main part, they're a lot the same. You brought up certain styles of dogs and how they hunt. Um, is there a certain type of dog or style of dog that you look for? Yeah, me, I like I like a fast moving dog, uh, medium to hot nosed, um, that fly around tree coons. Um, I've got away uh, with that just a little bit with Bank it's definitely worked for me now he's more of a trailing type of dog that trees cans as he comes to him uh, i've done a lot of winning with him that's because he don't pass coons up uh, medium to hot nosed dogs sometimes they're they get out of pocket a little bit too much on you uh, and it's hard to keep up with them especially nowadays in these 90 minute hunts so uh, me personally i've kind of went to a dog that kind of hunts a little bit closer and looks to tree more coons than what I used to hunt and not be a mile and two or three minutes treed. And then, then dogs are kind of few far in between. I'm not sure if you know this, the answer to this question or not, but do you know over the years how much money you've won? Uh, I'd say all together and everything, I've, I've won well over 500,000. Uh, I've won uh, three world titles, I won the youth world, ACHA world and the PKC world. Uh, I've won super uh, super stakes. I've won a truck. Um, won a pro pro race, which back in the day that used to be one of the big big events. I mean, it was it was just as big to win it as it was the world hunt. Um, I won that with uh, little money. Uh, them are some of the bigger things that I've won. So this is a job for you? Yeah, it's all it's all I've ever done. Um, I've been fortunate and I've had good dogs and uh, I was partnered with Larry Danner for 10 or 11 years with big money and little money and money in the bank. Still partners with him on money in the bank and big money and then uh, kind of went our separate ways and I started hunting for Fred Tennis from um, Minnesota. Uh, he owns uh, Breaking the Bank and uh, the new dog that I just uh, got, Internet Sensation. He owns both of them and I hunt for him full time. Um, we've been, haven't really hit big yet. We've, we've won, I'd say I've hunted for in the last two and a half years. I've won probably roughly Fifty or sixty thousand dollars since I've been hunting for him and PKC, and we placed in the World Hunt, um, UKC World Hunt. The last the two years we placed in it. We didn't get in it this year. Um, placed in the TOC. Um, been in Autumn Oaks the last three years in the top sixteen. Um, that's some of the bigger ones that won with him since I've been handling for him so far. And I guess how, a lot of people might not know this, but how often are some of the bigger hunts? Well, nowadays you can about go to a, a major hunt, hunt for 20 or $30,000, probably once or twice a month. Um, 
if you want to go and hunt in different registries in between Pro Sport and um, PKC. And now UKC's got a new program. They're they're going to start paying money. Um, so I'd say with them three registries right there, you could go to a major hunt at least once a month, if not two times a month, to hunt for 15000 and up. So how, how many nights a week do you hunt? Uh, I'm going to say on an average, I probably hunt six nights a week. At yeah. least every, five guaranteed. I'd say closer to six, though. So you're a competition hunter, but how often are you hunting when it's not a competition? Mm, I'd say I probably go to one decent size hunt a month. Yeah. Uh, other than that, it's pleasure hunting, hunting dogs, getting dogs ready, or... Um, probably my biggest thing is I sell several dogs a year that are ready to perform at the major level and then sell them when they're ready and because they're not out of my dog or whatever it would have to be that don't suit me just right um, and I'll sell it to somebody that's looking for something to run the hunts. So your average person might not know that there's kind of like uh, there's not really a difference but people think there's a difference between pleasure hunters and competition hunters and there's really not because if you don't enjoy com just going hunting, you're not going to competition hunt very well because you, no. most of your work is put in when you're not at a hunt. Yep. Now there's some people that strictly pay people to that keep their dog tuned and all they do is get it and take it to a hunt. But um, if you're wanting to compete yourself at a major level, you gotta you gotta put in the time. You definitely gotta practice to uh, the win. And something else that I thought of back there at that tree, a lot of people they'll see this and they might not understand that a lot of people like if i post a video one of my dogs treed they want to know what happens next they assume that you shoot the coon out of the tree or they're unsure and the reality most times we do exactly what you just did you just take them a little bit further and recut them yeah yeah i mean every dog's different some dogs need more coons than others um but for the most part you practice how you do in a hunt and you don't get to you don't get to kill a coon to hunt so you just get them teach them to recut off them trees and uh pretty much practice practice how you're going to do on the weekend Make it to 10. 
Where are we going? Huh? Where are we going? We'll wait on him to get struck and treed. Um, you just want to tell us a little bit about this dog? Uh, money in the bank. I won a 2019 PKC World Hunt with him. Uh, I've won probably 107, 108,000 with him. <coughs> uh, he's still the only dog that's ever won all three nights of a Pro Classic. Uh, $4,000 entry. Got in the final, final four all three nights. And we hunted it off, and he won it all three nights. Won the th one thirty thousand in three nights. Um, I won about seventy, seventy-one or seventy-two thousand dollars with him in thirty days. Hmm. Uh, he's a grand knight. Uh, I've been I bred him quite a bit when I first opened him up to public stud. I got a pup out of him now. I call Breaking the Bank. I've won a little over twenty thousand with him. He's a grand knight. Um, Got him the top 16 Autumn Oaks. Uh, done quite a bit of winning with him. I didn't really start putting him in hunts until he's about two years old, right after his one year old super stakes. Um, there's several other pups. There's a, there's a pup in uh, New York doing a, quite a bit of winning. There's a pup in uh, Florida doing a lot of winning. So they're kind of winning a little bit everywhere. Seems to be reproducing just as good as the other ones I had. Um, about all that's about all he's accomplished that's enough <laughs> i'm jack my name's jackson i'm seven you having fun out here yeah do you like going coon hunting with your dad yeah which one's your favorite dog um break break i on patreon i opened up a question thing where people could ask questions to you yeah so i'm gonna go through some of them now we wait on him to tree um ethan asks um where you think the future of the sport is headed and what the future holds and that's hard to say you ask some people and they'll say it's a dying sport but <clears throat> i have a hard time believing that i mean just the money that they're paying out uh I think if it keeps going as far as the money that it pays out, it's going to bring a lot of other people that ain't never coon hunted before that's, that's got money that wants a chance of uh, winning great money and being on the highest platform you can get. Uh, so I, I think it's progressing. Um, a lot of your local clubs, your smaller events, I don't they're not as good. But I think a lot of that's got to do with because everybody's got a club. Uh, there's still the same amount of people hunting. They're just not gathering in one spot because you can wait tomorrow night. And there's a there's a hunt right in your back door. Mm -hmm. I think that's where a lot of people kind of get mis misaccepted of that is just because there's so many clubs compared to what there used to be. And I kind of agree with you because there was kind of a a definite slowdown when the fur market really tanked and mm -hmm. people quit hunting for fur for money. But now that there's another financial incentive. Like that's yeah. way more than the pelts. Yeah, that, there's there's definitely the hide hunters and the the market for the younger dogs has definitely went down because you don't have you don't have people hunting them through kill season and then and then selling them at the end of kill season no more. Uh, it was a lot easier to find a good start at young dog after season, but that's getting harder and harder because not a lot of people hunt young dogs like they used to. And I think it's just because of the fur prices because your older people that don't hunt in the hunts. Uh, they're not pleasure hunting no more like they used to because they don't have a an incentive to do it. Yeah.
This is all in deer. All in deer. <laughs> yep. Damn. Yep. Just laying down up there. See them right there, buddy. Look. Right See their eyes moving. Yep. They look terrified up there. Yeah. 